What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here, alive uh, and well. Thursday, January 19th, 2023. It is about 9, 10 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And it uh, looks like latest quake of 1.9 into the region of Alaska. We've definitely seen some uptick in activity here across the West Coast today. Uh, also up there in Alaska. Let's go ahead and check out the activity across the USGS map where we've seen uh, a little bit of movement from about northern Cal southward. The uh, 2.5 map and above kind of shows a little bit of increasing activity out here along the west coast. Most of it along the plate boundary. We did have one deep earthquake here into the Cascadia subduction zone about 26 kilometers deep for that 3.6. Uh, also further down south here into the Cloverdale area, 3.6 coming in just on the uh, just off the uh, Bartlett Springs Fault, I believe, or the uh, Makama Fault, Coast Range Fault system here. And a couple other quakes down along the creeping segment. One earthquake here in the 2.5 range outside of Modesto. And of course that one down into the Ridgecrest area near Little Lake. But uh, definitely overall a seismic uptick in activity across California today. Kind of watching that, seeing how it plays out. But that's not the only place that has seen an uptick. Uh, also up here along the Aleutian Trench and back building here along the, uh, just prior to the subduction zone, seeing a little bit of earthquake activity as well uh, earlier this afternoon. Good indicator here of some strain uh, built up in the region. Also further west here along the Aleutian Trench, seen some activity this morning and late last night and a little uh, cluster fashion here. Largest was a 4.8. It's a movement up around the Denali area as well. Again, a little bit of seismic uptick along the eastern Pacific uh, regions here. All right, uh, further inland, not uh, not seeing too much activity. We did have some activity in Oklahoma and the Texas area earlier today. Nothing though this evening. Last one was a 3.0 near the Fairmont, Oklahoma area. Nothing really happening across the eastern portion of the country. Some older quakes there from late last night. Yellowstone got uh, 0.7. Go ahead and check out the latest Yellowstone overview here. Across the uh, National Park, which looks like uh, fairly calm. Not a whole lot going on, although last 24 hours seen uh, a couple spikes here and there. Indicative of some very, very small microquake activity occurring there at uh, Yellowstone National Park. The trimmer map tonight, uh, not too much, but we did continue to see some activity into the Northern California area. Looks like about 301 epicenters here at the very extreme southern end of the Cascadia and also a little bit up here around the Medford area. Uh, this activity occurring about 35 to 45 kilometers into the subduction zone. Uh, sometimes that does add, well, obviously it adds strain onto the locked area up here offshore. But also at the same time, sometimes we can see earthquakes a little bit further upstream. Uh, and that's kind of what we've seen there with that 3.6 earlier, about 26 kilometers deep. So a little bit further upstream than the trimmer. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here across the area of the Caribbean. Some movement uh, around Puerto Rico. Looks like we're starting to get that, uh, well, I can't really say a swarm back. It's been awfully quiet here over the past couple days. Normally we at least see a good 15 to 20 earthquakes in this area, but... Things are relatively quiet for now. Uh, last earthquake was a 3.4 up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. Watching that pretty closely there. Somewhat deep, about 46 kilometers deep. Uh, also off the coast of Nicaragua, San Salvador area, El Salvador. All seeing some earthquake activity earlier this afternoon with a couple fours in there. Uh, now the latest map here. Looks like there may be some activity, uh, some smaller earthquakes there in the mix as well. A couple threes and down into the South America region. A couple threes and twos as well. None of that really showing up here across the USGS map, which is typical because they only report, for the most part, 4.0 and above internationally. There's that 4.6 from yesterday, pretty deep at 202 kilometers into the Peru Chile Trench. Over here around the Big Island, Hawaii, got one earthquake uh, around the Pahala area, 2.2 coming in. A little activity around the crater regions of Kilauea Volcano as well. No major changes to note there across the board on the volcanoes. Western Pacific, uh, aside from these two deep earthquakes here, 
Uh, yet, well, this is early this morning, 7 o'clock. We haven't really seen any further surface activity kicking up here uh, as we would expect. But uh, no doubt it's building up here for the next big one. Eventually, when that will happen, who knows? All I know, that one was pretty deep. 499 kilometers for that 4.4 early this morning. I uh, still seeing a pretty good cluster of earthquakes here. Indonesia area, Banda Sea region. Quite a few fours kicking off here over the last 24 hours. And uh, some smaller quakes in there as well. Not really seeing a whole... Well, it looks like we're starting to see a little bit of migrational fashion, fashion here. Coming off the Mediterranean. Working its way up around the India area. Now, a lot of times, we'll watch this train of activity work its way uh, up and then over. Uh, but this is kind of weird. We're starting to see activity work its way um, the, the opposite direction here. We did see some fives, uh, including a 3.0 coming in right now to the area. Let's see where this is at. It looks like the Poland area, 10 kilometers deep for that 3.0. But uh, yeah, it's just a little on the odd side with the gap of activity here about the northern end of the Java Trench up through Myanmar, Nepal area. Looks like it halts right about there. So something, something um, still I think going to pop off here pretty soon. Either way, definitely seen a noticeable uptrend in activity here across uh, portions of the Middle East and further westward around the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, 5.1 earlier this morning as well into the eastern Afghanistan region. Uh, let's see what else we got here into the Fiji region. Looks like uh, one earthquake here, 4.9, 10 kilometers deep. Up around the uh, Samoa area, Tonga Trench. Of course, we have seen a lot of deep activity here recently. Still waiting for uh, a little bit of further movement down south here, though, along the Kermadec Trench. And the EMSC model and GeoNet servers show... Not a whole lot here tonight for New Zealand. Uh, a couple other fours up here. Those are those shallow earthquakes around the Tonga region and Samoa. The GeoNet servers. Let me check this out here real quick and see what we have for the latest activity here. We'll go to geonet.org.nz, New Zealand. Uh, looks like, let me see here, 32 minutes ago. A couple small ones, nothing major. Five hours ago, seen a 2.8. Um, looks like south of the uh, Tepo Super Volcano. Not a whole lot going on here, folks. Um, the drums, volcanic drums, pretty much confirms that as well. A little bit of spotty activity, but overall things are uh, relatively stable, relatively calm there across most of New Zealand. All right, uh, what else we got? The Atlantic Ocean, nothing going on there. Super duper quiet once again. All right, um, let's see what else we got here for space weather. Just kind of going to make this a short update, folks. I'm still not feeling good. I've uh, been in bed most of the day. Our SFI index here is elevated once again due to all the sunspot activity to 226. I think it peaked out at 232 here a few days ago. But there is a couple, there's a, quite a few massive sunspot regions that uh, are currently facing Earth. Uh, this bad boy right here, 3190, if I remember right, uh, 3190, is um, it's there. It's directly facing us right now here on this planet. Uh, so if it's going to do something, it better do it quickly because these things kind of scoot along pretty quickly. Uh, and this will be off towards the western limb here before we know it. So a couple mu massive sunspots. And um, for the most part... Um, you know, there's still quite a few regions in here that we need to watch. Some further developing little sunspots here around the northeastern limb. But uh, overall threat, looks like. Let me see what this is. 15% chance for an X flare. M flare at 60. C flare at 99. Uh, proton event there at about 15%. Uh, no major recent flares on the X ray flux chart here. A couple C flares earlier. One M flare this morning, it looks like, but that was about it. Uh, again, we'll keep an eye on it. Things can kind of pop up out of the blue. Current uh, solar flare activity, I'm not really seeing anything coming in. Again, we would notice that uh, first on this uh, solar flare detec detection chart here. And there's not a whole lot. Uh, no major coronal holes facing us and no major uh, geomagnetic unrest at the higher latitudes. Everything looks fairly calm uh, for the most part. 
Here's the visible disc here. It's uh, definitely peppered with quite a bit of large sunspots here. Beautiful ones, but they're uh, they're behaving. <laughs> so if we're if we're wanting some um, some spool, uh, some space weather activity, we need these guys to act up a little bit and uh, create a couple of sparks uh, so we can get some auroras going up at the higher, maybe the mid latitudes. I would love to see some down here in California. It would take a pretty pretty sufficient uh, CME to uh, create that, but it has happened before. Just a matter of time. All right, uh, folks, a uh, real quick glance here at the weather before I jump off here. Again, I don't know what's going on with me. i got body pains. Um, not really a fever because I've been taking some ibuprofen to keep uh, uh, keep it down, but just been, uh, been in bed all day. No runny nose, uh, no sore throat, just body aches, and uh, I don't know, kind of weird. So I've been trying to keep this under control here. All right, uh, looking at the weather activity here along the West Coast, things are relatively quiet, uh, at least up until about the uh, first couple days here into February. Things return back to a wetter pattern here in Northern California with a couple good systems coming in. These are some cold systems that look like looks like uh, as they're coming down out of the north northwest area. But uh, either way, doesn't look like we're completely done with the wet weather, and that is good with me because February and March is still our rainfall months here in Northern California and our lakes are, well, they're not full. Um, quite a few of them are just only at about 50 to 60%. So we need a lot, a lot more, uh, quite a bit of snow up in the mountains, but uh, we need some more. Right now we'll just enjoy this little break that we're having. All right, folks, I think that's about it. Um, I think I'm gonna call it a night and um, I've just been drinking a lot of water, trying to flush out whatever uh, whatever's going on here. Missy Mimi's, like I said, was sick. She's still sick, uh, but her, the brunt of her uh, almost seemed like she had a cold because she had a lot, a lot of runny nose and congestion. Uh, I don't have any of that. I just have body aches and uh, like headaches and it's just overall down feeling, no energy, and actually short of breath as well. Uh, so it's a little on the weird side. Smells fine, tasting's fine, uh, none of that, and right now I don't have a fever, so kind of odd. But either way, um, we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Have a good one. Again, uh, West Coast, um, you know, it's kind of hard to say right now exactly. Um, a couple different areas I think we definitely need to watch here is around the um, Himalayas south now with continued activity here that seems seem to be migrating further east uh, and also of course west coast with the renewed activity up here uh, so we'll see how it plays out all right guys have a good night we'll catch you back here tomorrow sometime